Goodbye, Mr. Hollywood. Chapter 6 A Tea Party Nick looked through the doors of the tea room in the Empress Hotel. Meg Hudson sat at a table with a man. The man was about thirty, or maybe a year or two younger. He was tall and brown from the sun. He wore a white shirt, white trousers, and white shoes. He said something to Meg, and she laughed. She looked very happy. A waiter came up to Nick. Can I get you some tea? he asked. No, thanks, said Nick. I'm with the two people over there. And he walked across to Meg's table. Hello, mystery girl, said Nick. Remember me? We met at Whistler. Your name was Jan then. But maybe today it's Meg Hudson. Meg Hudson looked up at him. Oh, she said, and her face went red. Who is this, Meg? asked the man. This is Nick, said Meg. He's a writer. Nick, this is Craig Winters. Sometimes called Mr. Hollywood, said Nick. Maybe. But how did you know that? asked Craig Winters. I guessed, said Nick. And I think I'm beginning to understand. Can I ask you a question, Mr. Winters? Does somebody want to kill you? Craig Winters' face went white. Kill me? What are you talking about, Annie Peck? Before I tell you, answer this question, please, said Nick. You called me M. R. Hollywood in Whistler, and you wanted the man at the next table, the man with white hair, to hear you. Is that right? Meg Hudson did not answer at first. Then she said quietly, Yes. Why? asked Nick. I wanted him to follow you, and not me. Why? Nick asked again. I think he's a detective, said Meg, and I think he's working for my father. I saw him soon after I left Toronto. He followed me. Meg put her hand on Craig Winter's arm. My father doesn't like Craig. A month ago, he told me not to see Craig again. I'm not happy, and he knows that. I think he guessed that I'm meeting Craig. And now he wants to find Craig and stop him seeing me. Stop him, said Nick. Or kill him? No, Meg Hudson said. Daddy doesn't. The man with white hair pushed me in front of a car in Vancouver, Nick told her, and he shot at me in Stanley Park. What? said Meg. Tell, tell me about this man with white hair, Winter said suddenly. Nick looked at him. He's about sixty, and he's tall and thin, he said. Do you know his name? asked Winters. Vickers, said Nick. Craig. Winters suddenly looked ill. Did he, did he follow you to Victoria? Did he follow you here? I don't know, said Nick. He watched Winters. You're afraid of him. Why? Why does this man Vickers want to kill you, Winters? Before Craig Winters could answer, Meg's face went white. Oh, no, she said. Look, look over there, by the door. Nick and Craig Winters turned to look. At the door of the tea room stood the man with white hair. He looked up and down the room, and then he saw them and began to walk across to their table. His hand was in his pocket. For a second or two, the three people at the table did not move. Then Craig Winters jumped to his feet. That's Mr. Hollywood, he screamed. That man there. And he pointed at Nick. The man's hand came out of his pocket with a gun. This is for Anna, he shouted. Nick moved very fast. The tea table went over, and Nick was down on the floor in a second. The shot went over his head, and Meg screamed. At the same time, 
Craig Winters shouted out and put a hand on his arm. There was blood on his white shirt. Then more people began to scream, and two waiters pulled the man with white hair down onto the floor. Get the police, somebody shouted. Chapter 7 At the police station, it was 7.30 p.m. Nick and Meg were in a room at the police station. The man called Vickers was in a different room with three detectives. There was a doctor with him, too. Craig Winters was at the hospital. The door opened, and a detective came in with two cups of coffee. He put them down on the table and turned to go out again. Detective Edmonds, Meg said, did the hospital call? Is Craig going to be all right? Winters, Detective Edmonds said, yes, he's going to be okay. Can I call the hospital now? asked Meg. I'd like you to wait, said Edmonds. Detective Keat is going to be here in a minute. He's just coming from the airport and... He looked through the open door. Ah, here he is now. A second detective came into the room, and behind him was a tall man with dark hair. Meg stood up quickly. Daddy, she cried. What are you doing here? The police called me, said Howard Hudson, and I flew here at once. Detective Keat met me at the airport. Now sit down, Meg. I want you to listen to me. He did not look at Nick. Meg sat down, and her father took her hands. Meg, last week Johnny Vickers came to my house. He wanted to talk about his daughter. You remember Anna, Meg? Three months ago, she jumped off a bridge in Boston and died. She was young, beautiful, rich, and she didn't want to live. Why? Because she loved a man, and the man took her money, ran away, and left her. And the man was called. No, said Meg. No. Yes, Meg. Yes. He was called Mr. Hollywood. No, shouted Meg. She began to cry. That's right, Miss Hudson, said Detective Keat quietly. To you? He gave the name Craig Winters. When Anna Vickers knew him, he was Carl Windsor. But he liked all his... Er, girlfriends to call him Mr. Hollywood. He took nearly $50,000 from Anna Vickers. And there was a girl before that. No, it's not true, Meg shouted. It is true, Meg, said her father. Winters, Windsor, gets all his money from rich men's daughters. Johnny Vickers loved his daughter. He went to her house in Boston after she died. He read her letters and learned about the money and the name Mr. Hollywood. And when he came to my house, I told him about you, Meg. I said, my daughter's got a new boyfriend and she calls him Mr. Hollywood. I don't like him, but I can't stop her. She's going away to meet him next week, I think. What can I do? Johnny put his hand on my arm, and he said, Don't be afraid for your daughter. I'm going to find that man and stop him. Meg said nothing. Her face was very white. For a minute or two, nobody spoke. Then Detective Edmund said, Vickers told us all about it, Miss Hudson. He followed you to Whistler and saw you with... Nick began to understand. With me, in the cafe. And Meg called me Mr. Hollywood. Howard Hudson looked at Nick. You're the travel writer guy, right? Lortz. Nick Lortz, said Nick. Vickers nearly killed me. He shot at me twice and... But Howard Hudson was not very interested in Nick. He looked at his daughter again. How much money did you give him, Meg? He said. I... I gave him $25,000, said Meg. 
Only for two or three months, he said. Then he... She began to cry again. Well, you can say goodbye to that money, said Hudson angrily. What's going to happen to Vickers? Nick asked Detective Edmonds. Hospital, I think, said Edmonds. Okay, he shot at you, and about fifty people saw him. But he's not a well man. The doctors are going to put him away in a hospital. Howard Hudson stood up. Okay, Meg, I'm going to take you home. My plane is waiting at the airport. Meg followed her father to the door. Then she remembered Nick and turned. I'm sorry, she said. I got you into all this. I called you Mr. Hollywood. That was wrong, but I didn't know. It's okay, said Nick. You know everything now, and it's better to learn it now and not later. Fifty thousand dollars later. Chapter 8, A Nice Smile Nick took the evening ferry back to Vancouver. He was tired and hungry, so he went down to get some dinner in the ferry restaurant. The restaurant was busy, and there was only one free table. Nick sat down quickly and began to eat. I must get back to work tomorrow, he thought, and forget about millionaires' daughters and men with guns. Excuse me, somebody said. Can I sit with you? Nick looked up. There was a pretty girl next to his table. He got up. It, it's okay, he said. You can have this table. I don't want it. And he began to move away. Please don't go, the girl said. Stay and finish your dinner. She smiled at him. It was a nice smile. But Nick knew all about nice smiles. I'm not hungry, he said. And he walked quickly out of the restaurant. The end.